English bookshop. Howdy. Hey. Hey, what's going on? So, uh, what you been up to? Not much. Cool, cool. So what do you want to do? Cool. So, uh, where are we exactly? We're in the English bookshop. Cool. What's the location? That's on the corner of Magro y Calama in the district of La Mariscal. Cool. And so I assume you're the owner. Yes. How long you have? How long have you had this shop? Eight years. Wow. How long have you been here in Ecuador? Uh, 20, wow, 27 this April. Nice. So where are you from? I'm from near London in uh, England. And so how did you find your way to, to Ecuador? I married an Ecuadorian lady from here. In, in England? No, we met in Australia. Really? Mm -hmm. and, and then she convinced you to come here? Um, well, I'm a traveler. Oh, nice. It was, an, it was an opportunity to go to somewhere I've never been before. Nice. And so, 14 years later, after coming here, what made you want to start a, a business, much well, less an English bookstore? When I first came here, I had a restaurant. But I always wanted to open a bookshop. But the region I was in, mm -hmm. it wasn't that commercial to... Um, to uh, uh, have a business in that area. Mm. Then eight years ago, I had the opportunity of opening in the, the center part of uh, La Mariscal. Mm -hmm. So I deal with most probably 90% of expats, mm -hmm. tourists, mm -hmm. um, Ecuadorians, most probably less than 10% of my custom. Mm -hmm. Here is not a cultural thing to read books. Yeah. But there, there are a selective few of Ecuadorians who appreciate books mm -hmm. in Spanish or in English. Mm -hmm. So, also I get a, a fair amount of students from local colleges mm -hmm. who their teacher insists that they should read a book. Ah, nice. And reluctantly, they come and buy a book. <laughs> nice. And so, um, your typical w customer, what do they, I mean, are, are they passing through or are they... Um... Generally, the average tourist is in Quito for two to three days. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, a lot of them come here to book trips around the country. Mm -hmm. um, this area is the area that, well, it's a magnet for... Tourism. It's called a uh, Gringolandia. That's what they they call it. Mm -hmm. I personally don't like that term. Because you're not from the United States. <laughs> not because it's just it puts me in a box. In a box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I mean, people do call me a gringo, <laughs> but if I use another term for Ecuadorians, they would say it's racist. Yeah. So, <laughs> but hey. That's the way it is. Yeah, definitely. And so, I, I bet people come here with a lot of stories about what they see in the country. <clears throat> Ecuador, after some time, you do get a bit cynical. Mm. A lot of travelers come through to escape for whatever it is back home. Mm -hmm. And they realize that, you know, back home is expensive, high taxation. But that money goes towards providing generally a good service. Mm -hmm. In Ecuador, there is no income tax. Mm. So it's a haven for people who really don't want to, really don't want to pay taxes. Mm. And it is cheap to live in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, generally it's cheap. Mm -hmm. Obviously, luxury items, very expensive. Can be very expensive. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you live like the locals, you can live quite cheaply. Definitely. And so, uh, but like, what do you like about Ecuador? You clearly like it, or you wouldn't have stayed here for so long. <sighs> My kids, the, the climate, 
uh, low taxation. Uh, it's a beautiful country. Mm -hmm. So diverse, so small and so diverse. Not to see in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. And you could be in the coast in six hours and in the jungle within that same same period. Yeah. Unfortunately, Ecuador is not geared up for tourism. Not yet. It's working on it. Oh, well, I've been <laughs> seeing that last 20 years. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. See, in other countries in Latin America, they do look after their tourists. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately here, uh, I don't know. This, things don't work that well. The service is not consistent. Yeah. But yeah. hey, you know, wherever you go throughout the world, you, you'll lose your bag or wallet in any country. Definitely. So, uh, you know, it's up to the, it depends on the person mm -hmm. who's aware mm -hmm. what's around him or her while traveling through Latin America. Mm -hmm. What are some things that you're not so keen about in Ecuador? <sighs> Um, the service industry is pretty bad in this yeah, country. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Uh, personal hygiene is not not up there. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of tourists who come here have a stomach bug. Yeah. Uh, it's adjusting to eating local local foods. Mm -hmm. I don't know why some so many tourists become sick. It could happen in other Latin American countries. Definitely. But. Uh, for me, I don't have any problems. Yeah, me neither, for the most part. So... And so how would you compare Ecuador to Colombia? Well... Because the landscapes are the same, pretty much. Uh, Colombia... Uh, Colombians, I don't know, provide a better service. Mm -hmm. They've had... Uh, 20 years of or more internal conf conflict, domestic violence, mm. and they, they welcome the tourists. Mm. The tourists feel, I don't know, seem to be a lot happier, mm. have good times there. Um, the only problem with Ecuador, there is, remember, sorry, going back to Colombia, there is domestic violence. Mm -hmm. But generally, the average tourist doesn't see that. Mm -hmm. Where in Ecuador, there is no real violence. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pickpocketing here. Yeah. Pocketing here. A lot of tourists lose phones, cameras. Yeah. That's just part of traveling through Latin America. It happens, Ecuador, on, happens in London. Happens everywhere. Too. Yeah, here, but there are um, a, a system in place mm. to help you. But here, it's just. My less wet then, huh? Mm. How would you compare Ecuador to Peru? See, as I I came here in 87, went back to England, mm -hmm. got married, came back three weeks later, started a business. Then, I don't know, 11 months later, I was a father. So, we hadn't had the opportunity of traveling throughout Latin America. Mm -hmm. What information I do give to tourists is basically second hand. Mm. But when you hear the same stories and the, the, the same information daily, yeah. I, I have a good idea what's out there. Mm -hmm. But anyone comes in here, I always tell them that, uh, you know, to be careful, watch your bags, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Because, you know, a lot of people lose their personal mm -hmm. belongings. But, like, how would you compare the Peruvians, people, like, from, from what you've heard from all the travelers that have been around? Okay, if we were in Europe, um, the Germans don't have great relations with the Polish or the yeah. Dutch. Uh, the, the English, I don't know how it is now, but we, we didn't have great rela re relations with the French. And it goes around. Yeah. Ecuador. Because the, con the conflicts of oh, 92 yeah. with Peru by taking Ecuadorian land. Um, yeah, I suppose there is, in some people, there is bad feeling. 
-hmm. But generally, Peruvians, Ecuadorians sort of get along okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I find Peruvians, Ecuadorians very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, Colombians, I find them a lot different. Yeah, very different. Uh, but if you look at Ecuadorians uh, or Peruvians, mm -hmm. their stature, their color, mm -hmm. their, their, the way they present themselves, they're very similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely I can see that. And so, what have been some some memorable experiences you've had in this bookstore like with characters with, personalities yeah I've seen some characters roll through here <laughs> too. yeah well here as I say it's an, it's an environment where you don't have to buy you can come here and talk if you see a book you buy it yeah. um, a lot of people come in here for information um, second opinions so, um, yeah, it's uh, different personalities. Mm -hmm. Any specific experiences? Man, this crazy guy came in one day. Or... <laughs> I had this German lady come in years ago. She's been traveling through Latin America for 10 months. Mm -hmm. Whatever, whichever hostel, bookstore she went into, she was looking for that particular book. She came to my bookshop and she found that book. When she found it, she was jumping up and down like a kangaroo for about <laughs> a minute, really? waving the book in her hand, saying, I found it, I found it, I found it. Yeah? Can I ask what book it, do you remember what book it was? Book in German. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Any, any less positive experiences? Some. Uh, Unfortunately, these days, I feel that Ecuador is attracting, I don't know, or being misled um, about Ecuador and how it is. Mm -hmm. The best information about Ecuador is coming down here, talking to the locals. Definitely. You don't have to go through, you know, middlemen. Mm -hmm. You just come down here and take it from there. Mm -hmm. As I say, Ecuador is a delightful country. A lot to see, it's a good place to live. But too many people come here with their political views. Uh, and um, Stuff that just does not fly here. <laughs> it does amongst themselves. Of course. But, um, I don't know. I mean, the whole object of being in Ecuador is getting away and doing something and living a whole different lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But the people coming here expect something to happen. These people are not travelers. No. Um, we get a lot of Americans here, and unfortunately most of them, other Americans call them economic refugees. Because the, the, the money they have, the um, social security mm -hmm. they pick up each month, doesn't make two ends meet back home, mm -hmm. but it does here. Mm -hmm. But um, <clears throat> I don't know. It's, it's a, it's a, I can talk about this particular subject for a long time. So. <laughs> but there are a lot. Of, there are Americans down here. I hear because they can make two ends meet. Basically, that's why they're here. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a lot of them would like to be back in the states. But because of the greed back home with Medi uh, your, the Medicare system, taxation, uh, they can't live back there anymore. Mm -hmm. We're here. They live fine. They can live mm -hmm. and make two ends meet. Mm -hmm. What about, um, what about, I've, I've noticed um, almost as much as Americans, I see there's a lot of Germans that come down here. Yeah, Ch Germans generally are traveling through. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest, our biggest ex expat community here is obviously Americans, mm -hmm. and a little bit of everything, yeah. everyone here, but mainly Americans. <clears throat> Ecuador is promoted to be a country of. I don't know. Everything that one wants. Yeah. Yeah. 
everyone what you know that wish comes true mm -hmm. but it's not easy to live in Ecuador we come to a country with a completely different mindset yeah and the way we do things and the way they do things mm -hmm. is completely different mm -hmm. and uh, I meet a lot of girls who have frustrating frustrating experiences with taxi drivers oh yeah um, if they had a meter system that every car uh, it's switched on when whoever enters the car they know they pay a standard fee mm -hmm. but a lot of people uh, have this uh, they argue a lot with the taxi drivers mm -hmm. because they try to charge them more of course so Unfortunately, what upsets me a lot here, a lot of, not a lot, but a lot of Ecuadorians think us foreigners as uh, people really gullible. Mm -hmm. But it's not the locals that take advantage of us, it's other expats who take advantage of each other. Really? Especially in business. Because hmm. we know how it is in this country. So we can find in... And, and other expats mm -hmm. but you know we live in a life where I don't know is there is there foundation mm -hmm. you know it's we live in a very superficial era yeah where everyone's a nice guy to each other but they're not they're out I don't know I can't I can't go beyond that. But all, I, all I can say is that unfortunately a lot of people take advantage of each other. Mm -hmm. It's a human thing. Yeah. You know? And I'm sure it's in all of us, it's the amount of you know, control in that mm -hmm. and, and try and do the right thing by others. Mm -hmm. And so what are some, some experiences that you had that like since you've been here that have, that have really stuck with you? That have um, kind of defined how you feel about the country or well I think <clears throat> there has been a lot of improvement in this country um, uh, I personally don't think the ones who are in charge uh, are doing enough for the people in need mm -hmm. but hey we look in other countries um, I can't say that for any country. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly how it is. Mm. Unfortunately, if you're at the bottom, no one takes much interest in you. No yeah. one cares. Yeah. But the governments, whatever country it may be, should do a lot more for the needy, mm -hmm. especially children. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the elderly. Uh, yeah, uh, of yeah. course the elderly. Mm -hmm. But in this country, there are uh, they do provide a service, but the income they make from petroleum mm -hmm. and ex exports, they could do a lot more for the people. Mm -hmm. Because the country's resources is the people's money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, crazy. And so, what if one thing I, f I think that most Ecuadorians learn from? birth as soon as they're as soon as they you know are cognitive is that there are people from the coast and people from the sierra what how would you define or how, the differences between the people from the coast and the the andean region um, the differences that you've noticed from your experience i find my personal experiences people don't smile too much in quito really? a lot of tourists have told me this they smile but the locals, sometimes they do, mm -hmm. but generally people don't smell that much. Mm -hmm. um, they're more conservative, they keep to themselves. Mm -hmm. They're more introvert than, uh, than the Costanians, mm -hmm. which are the coast people. Costanians are more open, they make jokes, they laugh a, mo a lot more. I, I overall, I, I think a lot of Costanians are generally a lot poorer than than people in the Sierra, especially in the Quito. Uh, 
Costinians, like the people in the countryside, enjoy life, but don't expect much from life. They're mm. content. Mm. They're content, they share uh, times with each other. But the difference is, is in England we have a class system. Mm -hmm. In this country it's just the same, yeah. you know? There is no connection between the people living in the countryside mm -hmm. than the people here with some money. Mm -hmm. There is no connection. They have nothing got in common. Yeah. So that's... Uh, they believe that they, they've got an education. They're, I don't know, maybe they think they're better. Yeah. But they're the same. Yeah, it's the same. It's race. the same, but they don't see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about, have you had much experience with the African descended Ecuadorians? And have you seen like that cultural difference? Um, me personally, not mm -hmm. really. There are not many in Quito. No, not really. <clears throat> uh, from my, well, I get the impression that most uh, the, um, uh, what do you call it, Morenos in this, mm -hmm. in this country mm -hmm. uh, seem to live in warm areas. Yeah. And yeah. if they live in the Sierras, they, they live in uh, Atavalo, Ivara. Valle de Chota. Exactly, where, where it's hotter, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, here is a multicultural sort of environment, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, generally, there's not a lot of uh, color folk in this mm -hmm. country, I mean, mm -hmm. sorry, in this city. Yeah. But the coast, coast uh, the, the coastal region, mm -hmm. um, from Salinas up to Esmeraldas, mm -hmm. yeah, most uh, most most of the black folks mm -hmm. they, they live uh, in that 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 region mm -hmm. or that, that those areas. But you haven't really met many, or I met many. a few. But hey, they're Ecuadorians. They have the same mindset. Mm -hmm. But. Um, I say, it's, it's strange in this country, amongst the expat community, we have a large community of Koreans. Mm -hmm. They do their own thing. Yeah. Yeah, and they're quite content to do their own thing. They don't sort of mix with anyone else. The Anglo-Saxons, we, I don't know, we do our own thing. Mm -hmm. There are groups, there are some groups quite happy with each other, and there's groups that uh, do other things. Mm -hmm. I personally, not, I'm not into the bar scene in this country. Yeah. Uh, I prefer to live where I am, in Los Chijos. And, uh, yeah, the bar scene has never been my cup of tea. Yeah. But as far as... See, the thing is, when you run a bookshop, you deal with mainly tourists or expats who live in this country. Mm -hmm. So the connection with locals is not that much. Most of the Ecuadorians who come here to buy books and know me, they come in here and just speak English. Mm. Rarely do they speak, uh, speak Spanish to me. Mm -hmm. Reluctantly, I try to make them speak English, especially the students. Because their teachers tell me when they come in here... Don't speak to them in Spanish. Don't speak to them. I just make them speak English. Yeah. So, that's what I try to do. And so when the local students come in here, what, are they, what kind of books do they tend to like to read? Um, <clears throat> classics. Hmm. They love classic books. Like, like Mark Twain, Shakespeare, or exactly anything mm. that's in a, a classic section, mm -hmm. they would read, mm. and they're very selective readers. Really, and classics. In this bookshop, now I must probably have ten thousand books. Nice. I saw I saw more classic books than any other category of book in this bookstore. Mm. Generally. Mm -hmm. Classics are still, even though 
you can get them on an electro uh, electronic device. Mm -hmm. People prefer to read it from a physical book mm -hmm. over an electronic device. Mm -hmm. And they know the, the classic books uh, are going to be good. <laughs> be read for nothing because you know they're over fifty years. Yeah. But people like a book. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Have you um, have you had much interaction with the um, with the Amazon cultures or any of the any of those people? And... No, to be honest, no. Wow. Or... I, I've you know. Sad isn't, it? Sad, isn't it? In 26 years, I've been to Maccas, Maca. which is on the outside of the mm -hmm. mess. It's in Morona, Santiago. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the only time I've been to the, uh, that region. Mm -hmm. I really haven't traveled around much around Ecuador. Well, it's kind of Ecuadorian to not travel much around Ecuador, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, in, in, that, in that way, I'm typical Ecuadorian. <laughs> so, I mean, I have been to several places around Ecuador, mm -hmm. but I couldn't live on the coast. It's too hot, too humid. Mm -hmm. I like it here in the Sierras. It's yeah. cool, and you can sleep well at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not. There's no humidity, no, no mosquitoes. Yeah, it's comfortable to sleep. Mm -hmm. As I say, I'm, I'm quite content living mm -hmm. where I live. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, I've created a good environment for me. Mm -hmm. I have the bookshop. Um, I live in a beautiful area in Los Chijos. Mm -hmm. um, you have a family. You made a family. Yeah, I have two boys mm -hmm. and a lady. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I have two sons. They look more Anglo-Saxon than mm -hmm. Ecuadorian. Do they have but a British accent as well? The eldest boy does. Mm -hmm. The youngest, not so much. But I always tell them to take the best from Ecuador and the best from England. Have they been able to? It's hard because in this country, because of the mindset is different, mm -hmm. you've got to teach them there is I don't know. Um, see, in this country, because people have, they don't have much education. Mm -hmm. They they only see what they see in front of them. Mm -hmm. They never see the wide view of anything. Mm -hmm. What I try and do with my two boys is, is trying to teach them, um, a di show them a different way, a different view. Mm -hmm. Now, when they, as they get older, if they want to adopt some of the, some of the things I've taught them, that's great. Mm -hmm. If they don't, they don't. Mm -hmm. But a father can only try. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I always tell them, you know, to say excuse me, mm -hmm. say please, thank you. If you hit someone on the bus, say excuse me. Mm -hmm. Compromiso. Mm -hmm. But. Here it's not enforced. Yeah. Um, being courteous to other people for mm. some reason. If someone knocks you, no big deal. Yeah. But that's the way it is. So how do you compare to the the other um, the other shops in the area for those that love books, Libra Mundi, you know, other stuff in the neighborhood? <clears throat> okay. These books are basically new bookstores. They cater for people who are quite happy to pay a full price. Mm -hmm. I, ca I cater for people who have modest means and to pay five to nine dollars for a book is, is okay. I have problems with certain customers because they say, wow, seven dollars for a book. But that very same book will cost you in a new bookstore three times as much, mm -hmm. or maybe more. Mm -hmm. But the people know they always come back here because my prices are very reasonable in comparison to what you would pay elsewhere. Mm -hmm. My competitors. And this is an environment where you come, I mean, obviously I benefit when you buy several books or a book, 
but it's a place to come in here to talk to other expats, uh, talk about you know, information about certain parts of the country. A lot of tourists come into this bookshop to exchange information. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're here for hours just talking. Hanging you know. out. And, uh, and to a lot of expats, this place and its escape from outside for a couple of hours. Yeah. You don't have to speak Spanish. You can listen to English or American humor. Mm -hmm. You could be sarcastic. You could be you could talk about books, talk about everything. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we don't like to talk about politics, but it sort of certain customers are always reverts back to that. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, basically it's a lounge. Mm -hmm. And people come in here, talk, they see a book, they buy it. Mm -hmm. But it's a good environment where you know that everyone is welcome. Yeah. Ecuadorian, whatever nationality, anyone is welcome mm -hmm. in this bookstore. If you want to buy or if you want to pass time, mm -hmm. everyone's welcome. Mm -hmm. That's basically my function. And every once in a while, you'll you'll give a free cup of tea. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I do make tea. <laughs> I give the. I have. We have Yorkshire tea here. If your camera goes up that way. The good stuff. That's normally. Um, it's this is cu customer's privilege. Ah. But we we the we, I only offer the English tea for the English. I feel that good English tea might be wasted on the uh, our American cousins. Yeah, we're not. You know, we we usually we prefer a good cup of coffee to a good cup of tea. Usually, yeah. I mean, I don't like coffee. I'm a, I'm a tea guy, but you know, I I really can't tell that much of a difference between a good cup of tea and an and an okay cup of tea. See, that's see. <laughs> we're talking about cultural differences that's a lack of education as well <laughs> so yeah so i don't spoil the americans with good tea because there is no appreciation <laughs> definitely cool and and uh you know just out of, out of curiosity what what kind of books do you like to read because you obviously love to read history history mainly european history mm -hmm. Uh, for me, Latin American history, even though it's interesting, but it's always sad. Yeah, always is really sad. And uh, I don't know. Um, history, I suppose, could be slightly dry, but it's, I find it, for me, it's stimulating. Mm -hmm. But as I said to you before, my best sellers is definitely classic. Mm -hmm. Or or a novel. And so if I were to come in here and say, you know, I'm not really sure what I'm looking for, but I could use a good novel. What would you tell me to look up? Uh, what, would, what would you put in my hand? See, so the thing is, <clears throat> it's like buying a suit. I've got to find out what your color is, your preference, style. Yeah. before I can make that choice. Yeah, it has to be catered. Exactly. I have to cater for every person who comes in here. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of books here that I haven't read, but I generally know my stock. I know what the customer mm -hmm. wants. Yeah. In most times that when I make a recommendation, uh, eight times out of 10, the customer comes back to say, that person's more than satisfied. Yeah. But I can have one book that nine people, one after another, can say, this is a fantastic read. But there's always one person come back and says, oh, yeah. I couldn't get into it. Yeah. But, you know, you size up the person. Definitely. Find out what their personal tastes are. Mm -hmm. And if you find that they're reading the same material, mm -hmm. try and persuade them to read something else. Yeah. Sometimes it works. Mm -hmm. And then they can move on to another author. Mm -hmm. One third of the customers who come in here come in on a, a friend's recommendation. 
mm. for a particular book. So, um, yeah, everyone has preferences. How do other people find out about the place? Word of mouth, mm -hmm. basically. Or, yeah, I say word of mouth is how I operate. Are you uh, in any guide? I'm in most guides, most of Lonely Planet, um, Footprint, uh, <coughs> major um, tour guides, you'll find me in them. So, um, Your reputation precedes you. I don't know. Thing is, in the bookshop, it's more... I don't know. It's an environment which is different from most other shops. In Absolutely. The sense, you don't feel that you have to buy. Mm -hmm. And there's no, none of that feeling that you've got to make a purchase. It's an environment where you can come in here and, you know, just chill out. As nice. I say, bookshops, it's instant karma as you walk in. Nice. English bookstore, what's the, where's the location again? On the court in the, in the district of La Mariscala here in Quito, or they call it Gringolandia, <laughs> we're on the corner of uh, Calama, uh, Diego Amagro. Nice. Cool. And we open at 10 and we close at 6 every day. Nice. Awesome. Thank All you. Right. Thanks a lot.